Good evening. At the risk of sounding like a media headline at the moment, the retail industry is going through one of the most difficult times that I can recall, um, <clears throat> mainly due to those headlines that we're seeing in our newspapers, on the TV, on a daily basis. Those economic challenges are creating turmoil in the retail industry. If we think back to the last time there was anything like what we're seeing in retail, it was back in 2008 and 2009, during a period known as the credit crunch, when retailers battled for like-for-like -like sales increases as consumers tightened their belts. And at that time, you recall, those consumers transferred their spending to the discounters, who fared particularly well during those few years. If we jump forward 14 years to now, and we're once again seeing the discounters win in terms of like-for-like -like sales increases and growth in their market shares. And that's at the expense of the traditional retailers, like the co-ops, like the multiples, Tesco's, Sainsbury's, Waitrose, etc. And even some of the, the value end of those retailers, the likes of Morrison's, are also now struggling to grow sales year on year. However, not only on this occasion are we battling loss of market share as retailers and year-on-year -year sales decreases, but also at this time we're seeing operating costs rise at a rate unseen by many of us in our lifetime. I will, as we'll move through the financial performance this evening, provide a little bit more detail of the biggest cost increases that your society is facing to begin to try and add some context around the half-year results that we're presenting tonight and you've got in the interim report. The challenges faced by the retailers can clearly be seen by the data being published by the Centre for Retail Research, which quantifies both the job losses and store closures over the first nine months of this year. Um, <clears throat> and that's split on this occasion between administration, so retailers going into administration and what they're calling rationalisation. And in recent years, I can only ever recall these figures quoting the administration as CVAs. I can never recall uh, rationalisation being split out. And I think that speaks volumes about those cost challenges that I've just referred to and we'll talk about later. The fact that retailers are now looking really hard at how they take cost out of their business and make sure that every area of their business is viable. You can see that the number of job losses and store closures um, through administration is roughly the same as it was last year, running at the same sort of level. But in terms of rationalisation, um, there are a lot more this year as people slim down their estates and get rid of those stores that are no longer viable or marginal. Those job cuts, those store closures, and indeed hits on profitability are playing out in the media. And we've just got a selection here of some of those that we've seen over recent months. Tesco's cutting head office jobs um, and raising pay for shop workers. Recruitment in the retail industry at the moment, and to be honest, not only in the retail industry, but we're seeing it in the travel industry as well, is particularly difficult. Why people are shying away from retail now, I don't know, but many retailers have raised hourly rates several times this year to try and attract staff into the business. We've got Morrison's profits plunging 50% uh, due to the inflation. Sainsbury's warning of lower profits. Audi's UK profits fall. Um, which is particularly interesting given that we are seeing Audi as one of those discounters that are increasing market share year on year. So I think that begins to show how tough it really is in the market. And then finally, um, just recently, a couple of weeks ago, Corp Group um, published their half year results where profits were slashed by 37 million um, as their sales flatlined. Um, earlier in the year, they announced 400 jobs, losses to go at their head office. Corp Group, from our point of view, is probably the biggest concern out of all of those. 
the group is the biggest part of the buying group that we belong to. And if they don't perform, then we all suffer. And I'll cover a bit of that on when we talk about gross profit as we work through the results. So it's set against those backdrop, that backdrop that the board and the management present the half-year performance for your society. In the first 28 weeks of the financial year, our interim, the gross takings have increased year on year by 8.1%. And that's being driven mainly by the department stores and the travel businesses that were closed for the first 11 weeks of last year due to the COVID lockdown. Ordinarily, I'd be turning cartwheels, to be honest, at an 8.1% sales increase. But if you actually start to look at the underlying performance of our business, then it's a very different picture. So if you look at the six-year performance, you can see that actually that 8.1 doesn't even begin to come close to cover what we lost through the COVID years. So in 2020, we had lockdown. In 2021, we had lockdown. And we had um, a very slow recovery in travel last year. So the 8.1 just shows that we haven't clawed back the volumes that we were doing in 2019. The core business of food um, is still struggling to recover from the shockingly poor on-shelf availability that we experienced in the second half of last year, which I reported um, <coughs> back in May of this year at the AGM where court groups struggled to deliver adequate volume of products from their depots into not only our stores, but other independent societies up and down the country, as well as their own. It's my belief that that had a large impact on consumers' confidence in being able to come into our stores and get what they wanted on each shopping visit. And I think we're still today suffering from some of that damage that was done over that prolonged period from August last year through to January of this year. If we look at the business sectors in turn, food, year-on-year -year decrease of 2.8% in the first half of the year. The figure is being negatively impacted by a store disposal, the Mount Batten Road in Braintree in February last year, but it is only a negligible decrease. If we drill down further into the food, we can see a little bit more where that decrease is coming along from. So the headline performance, 2.8% down, so that covers all of the tins, the packets, and the service element for the lottery and the bill payments, pay points. The core category turnover, so that is the tins and packets, is down 3.4%, which when you put that against fluid, food inflation, which is approaching 10%, it gives you an idea of how much we're struggling. And indeed, you can see that in the volume, with the volume of product we're selling, down by 8.9% after the first half of the year compared to last year. The number one priority of the management team currently is rebuilding of that consumer confidence that we believe was lost last year in our food stores by focusing on the store standards, cleanliness, and obviously the on-shelf availability of our product. If we look at fuel, fuel is doing particularly well this year, sales have increased 40.5%, and that's being driven by inflation in, food, in fuel price, as we saw at the beginning of the year when a litre of fuel was approaching the £2 mark. Although it's dropped back, it's still higher than last year. And also, more encouragingly, volume is also up. Uh, two reasons. A, lockdown beginning of last year, which have impacted the comparatives for this year. But also, as we've gone through this year, we've continued to build volume in most periods. So an encouraging performance from fuel in the one petrol station. Department stores, um, an impressive figure of 87.8%, but again, shut for the first 11 weeks of last year. So those comparatives are very low. The strategy in our department stores continues to be to reduce the level of trading losses that we are um, <coughs> recording each year. We continue to seek new and exciting fashion brands to add the variety to our stores, um, but with a number of major brands that have disappeared from the high street in recent years, this continues to be difficult. 
However, the department store team have done an excellent job this year of attracting more brands into our stores, not of the level of the Arcadia brands that perhaps we once had, the Miss Selfridge, the Top Shop, um, <coughs> the Wallace, but they are numerous brands that have come in and Brendan will update you on some of those brand names later in his presentation. The Board and Management continue to review closely the department store's operation. Um, we continue to explore options to minimise the risk that this business presents to the society over the longer term, given the losses it's incurring. Our funeral business has generated year-on-year -year increase in gross takings of 10.2%, being driven by an increase in market share from not only the existing estate, but also additional business from the new branch in Basildon. The gross takings in our investment property have grown in the first half by 19.1%, with all our commercial properties now having tenants. If we turn to our gross profit or our income, it's risen year on year 5.8%, but again, um, comparatives were low last year for the reasons previously given. During times of high inflation, not only from the manufacturers of the products that we sell on to our consumers, but also from the suppliers of the services to the society and the goods not for resale, the management of our gross profit has become even more important and a great deal of time has been invested this year to ensure that we get the careful balance between passing on the inflationary cost from the manufacturers, but also while remaining competitive in a market where price is becoming more key than ever. Operating costs have increased year on year by £1,095,000. That's a 9.6% increase in cost. And if, you can, if we go back to that slide, we're talking about gross profit have increased just by 5.8%. And those operating costs are increasing by 96 which gives you an indication of where the pressure is becoming on the trading profit. The main drivers in the increase of operating costs in the first half were utility costs, primarily electricity, which increased year on year by £249,000. Our distribution costs, so this is the cost that we pay to Court Group to have goods delivered into our store, increased by £117,000. And you've got to remember that that's an increase of £117,000 on 8.9% less product going through our stores. So the cost per case has gone up substantially, well in excess of 10% year on year. Business rates last year, we had relief due to the COVID pandemic. Um, this year, business rates are £404,000 higher than last year because of that relief. In addition, labour costs have increased by £289,000 as a result mainly of the 6.6% .6 increase in the national living wage in April of this year. Those four elements I've just quoted have increased year on year combined by £1,059,000. That's 96.71% of the total increase in operating costs. So four elements are a large chunk of the cost. What it does demonstrate is the underlying cost base, those ones that we can impact day in and day out, have been very much kept under control and increases at a minimum. The society's cost to income ratio has therefore risen substantially from last year at 96.38 to this year of 99.15. We continue to keep a tight rein on the operating costs to ensure that no unnecessary costs are incurred and the, your board continues to re review performance on a four-weekly basis. There's no evidence to suggest that in the short term this pressure on operating costs will fall. And with a potential increase in the national living wage next year at the highest level we may have seen yet in the history of the national living wage, management are already looking at how this can be absorbed while re rebuilding the profitability. The high level of operating cost increases and the volume decrease in food has led to a drop in trade in profit to £113,000, a drop of £346,000 or 75%. The core food business 
is the largest weakness at the trading profit level, driven by those volume decreases, the increased energy costs, the higher distribution costs, and lower annual rebates from the FRTS buying group. That goes back to the comment I made about co-op group needing to perform for independence to perform. Because they're about 80% of the volume going through the buying group, if their volume falls, combined with all of ours, then the central rebates that we get from suppliers for stocking, stocking their products falls also. And we've seen a large fall this year in that central income. In department stores, encouragingly, in the first half, the loss from de department stores fell by 55%. And that's the lowest level for many years from our department stores. The improvement in department stores is mainly due to the action that we took as we come out of the pandemic to reduce the cost base in that part of our business, given that we were anticipating lower level of gross takings, uh, mainly through the loss of Arcadia and expecting a slow recovery in the department stores business, as many other operators have seen. At the net profit before distributions level, the society has recorded a profit of £124,000 78% or £451,000 lower than last year. On paper, the society continues to show no debt as a reasonably strong cash balance is currently held and also combined with the paying down of loans over the last year. The value of members' funds has risen from £13,659,000 last year to £15 million and 98,000 this year. Accordingly, the reserves have also increased to 6,425,000 from the 4,478,000 last year. As you can see from the figures, the first half of the year has been extremely challenging. I think it's fair to say that the second half at the moment looks like it's going to be equally challenging. We currently await more information to understand how the government's intervention on energy prices will assist the society, if indeed it does. The um, reason I make that comment is we're not sure, because most of the electricity has been bought in advance, a hedge position, we're not sure that actually we're going to benefit because there's a chance that the government's unit rate of 21.1 could actually be above what we've hedged the position on. So hopefully it gives you an overview of the first half performance. I'll hand over to Brendan Smith, Chief Operating Officer, to go through the business developments in the first half of the year. <coughs> 